Washington coach Don James was on top of the world after his Orange Bowl victory last season, and his number two national ranking was Washington's best finish ever. This year was to be even better. Some preseason polls even picked them number one, but it's been a frustrating 1985 for Don James so far. Turnovers and injuries have held the Huskies back with two early defeats. For UCLA, it's been a different story. Terry Donahue has become the winningest Bruin coach ever this season. They stand at 2-0-1 behind their swashbuckling quarterback tandem of David Norrie and today's relief pitcher Matt Stevens. So the Pac-10 opener for both schools. The road to the Rose Bowl begins today. one of the biggest uh, rivalries around the nation. The journey to the Rose Bowl does begin uh, with Washington. If we come out victorious, then I'm sure the momentum will be in our favor. It could uh, be, end up being a big game later on in the race for the Pac-10 championship. It's of utmost importance, and uh, I think it's going to be a real war out there. Sports presents College Football. Live from Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington, it's the UCLA Bruins versus the Washington Huskies. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer and the spacious 1985 cargo van. Packs it in. Strohs and Stroh Light, the circle of sports beer. And by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil, there's no better engine protection under the sun. A sensational day weather-wise here in the great Northwest. The Pac-10 opener for UCLA and Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, and I'm joined by a man who quarterbacked Oklahoma to two national championships, Steve Davis. Steve, Washington lost their first two games and stunned some people up here. But you got to know, in 1977, they lost three of their first four and went on to win the Rose Bowl. So they look at this as a fresh new start. Well, it is a new start. Last week's victory against Houston, more than anything else, they won. They were frustrated. I think the younger players, too, looked at last season and realized that they were supposed to play to those expectations. They played. They played well. And I think they're looking at this as a brand-new beginning. A fast start for Terry Donahue's UCLA Bruins. Some people are saying this is potentially his best ball club. I think it is. Historically, their teams play better in November because of their complicated offense. He started four different senior quarterbacks in the last four years. Donahue's got a good team. His offensive team's played much better, and I think they are accepting the challenge today. The Bruins and Huskies, they'll be coming on the field when we return. <clears throat> this is CB Cairo, the news specialists. Sixty thousand fans, Seattle, Washington, Husky Stadium. UCLA against Washington. The Bruins have come onto the field. Terry Donahue, his 73rd win last week, the all-time winning coach at UCLA. He talked about the key to today's game. Well, both teams have gifted kickers, and uh, every time we've played Washington in the past, the kicking game uh, has historically, I think, influenced uh, the game to some degree, either a punt return, a block punt, a kickoff return, something has happened uh, that has really influenced the game. And I think that uh, uh, today will be no exception. When you're in a big game, and this is indeed a big game, uh, when you're in that kind of a contest, the kicking game becomes real crucial. And now the Huskies of Washington with a one and two record coming on to the gridiron here. pick up the pieces with a national championship out the window, but still a real crack at returning to the Rose Bowl. Here's the dean of Pac-10 coaches. He talked about the discipline of this UCLA team. I feel like in the early goings, uh, with the schedule we've, we've played, that uh, their team seems to be playing as well as anybody in the country from the standpoint of pure coaching. They're, they're not making a lot of mistakes. They line up right, and then they do a lot of things well. 
The James Gang of Washington played host to Terry Donahue's Bruins. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. This rivalry began back in 1932. UCLA and Washington. Washington won that game 19 to nothing. Let's go back a little bit in history to the black and white days. It's been a very tight rivalry with UCLA winning two of the last three games played here in Seattle. Just a gorgeous day for football. You couldn't ask for a better day, and they're bragging about it here in the great Northwest. There it is, temperature 70 degrees. You can see the wind. That's always swirling here at Husky Stadium at 14 miles per hour. And a couple of keys in this game, Steve Davis. One, Washington has to run the football. Well, they're a fullback-oriented offense. Rick Finney has been injured. He's back and healthy. I think he's an important player in the offensive attack. Also, the turnover aspect. Coming into the ball game, they've committed nine turnovers. It took seven games last year before they had nine turnovers. That's a real important aspect of the game. They've got to eliminate the mistakes. UCLA won the toss. They deferred, however, giving the choice to Washington. As you can see, Washington elected to receive. UCLA will be kicking right to left. Jim Bray, number four, the senior, who's just been sensational in the kickoff department, booting for Terry Donahue's Bruins, Daryl Franklin, and David Trimble back for the Washington Huskies. Uh, Bray, Bray is a senior out of Vermont. This is Trimble, and there'll be no return on that, and that's been the story all year long on Jim Bray's kickoffs. And here is Hugh Millen. He'll direct the Washington Huskies, and let's take a look now at the starting 11 offensively for him. Millen will have Finney and Weathersby as his tandem at running back. Trimble, who was drafted by Toronto in the major leagues. Lonzel Hill at J.D. Hill's son. And Rod Jones, who they feel could be the best they've ever had at tight end. Hugh Millen has thrown five interceptions thus far. One of those, however, was tipped. But he has the strong arm. UCLA say that he reminds them of Steve Bono, who they had last year. Weathersby Finney behind Miller. Here's Weathersby, and he is hit by Whalen. Mark Whalen, number 95, the All-America candidate for the Bruins, the senior out of Burlingame, California, and he is their strongest man up front defensively. The loss on the play. Bring up second down. 15 yards to go. The loss back to the 15-yard line. Washington with a big line as usual, but this possibly is their fastest offensive line ahead of Hugh Miller. On a second and 15, this is Weathersby again, the redshirt freshman, and he's going to get it back out to the 18-yard line. Let's look at that offensive line that I was mentioning just a moment ago. Dennis Soldat is a senior on the left-hand side. Garth Thomas, extremely strong. agan has got a battle with Terry Toomey, the nose tackle for UCLA. Burnham had a brother who was a linebacker for Washington, and Gogan is huge, 6'7", 275 pounds. The agan toomey matchup that you mentioned, Gary, is really key. Toomey's a much quicker nose uh, tackle than Agan has faced all season long. That's going to be crucial in the ballgame today. Third down, 11 now from the 19-yard line. Miller on a counter action, and Weathersby stumbled. He had some running room, lost his footing at the 23. Looked like he had a lot of running room on the play. Could have possibly picked up the first down. Instead, it'll bring up fourth down. Weathersby is their leading rusher and receiver. This is his second start. Washington needs desperately to develop a tailback to replace Jock Robinson, who had an outstanding career at Washington. Vince Weatherby seems to be that player. Thane Cleveland will punt from the nine. This is Gifford Irvine, a senior. He's only about 5'5". Five five. Cleveland's punt not all that exceptionally good. Irvine at the 45 to the 50, and he'll get just across the 50-yard line. And so the Bruins of UCLA now will have it for the first time. 33-yard punt that time, a seven-yard return by Irvine. There is Norrie starting at quarterback. Mel Farr, Jr., his daddy, the All-American at UCLA. Primus, who has a real hip move. He really has an outstanding open field running style. Durrell really compliments this guy, Sherrard, the all-time leading receiver at UCLA. And Derek Tennell, a former fullback, now a tight end. First down, almost on top of the 50-yard line. 
In motion comes Dorrell. Norrie giving off to Primus, and Primus is going nowhere. This defense a year ago for Washington was just exceptional. They've had some injury problems early, but that time an outstanding play by Fuyono and Ron Hadley and also this guy, David Rill. Rill was nominated by the Washington coaching staff last week as a Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week. He was outstanding that went over Houston. From the 50, second down 10. The split backs this time are Farr and Primus. Nori getting up. And Primus will make it to the 45-yard line. He'll pick up five. It's going to bring up third down and still five yards to go. Offensively, this line of UCLA has really come out of the shoot well. Robert Cox, a former junior college player. Hartmeyer played with a very interesting face mask. Goble is dinged up a little bit. He's from Midland, Texas. McCullough, an all-Pac-10 candidate. And Warnick is only a sophomore, but they feel he has outstanding potential. We've got two outstanding coaches on the field. UCLA came out in split backs. That's the first time they've run out of split backs this season. That's a little wrinkle the offensive coaches put into this game. Third down and five for David Norrie, and he's going to throw for the first time. Wide open, far side is Durrell. He makes the catch, and that'll be a first down for UCLA. Carl Durrell out of San Diego, out almost all of last year with a shoulder separation. And as I mentioned, he and Sherrard really give the defensive secondary fits. Terry Donio with 73 wins. That surpassed Bill Spaulding, who had been the all-time winning coach at UCLA when they beat San Diego State last week. Durrell has come out of the ballgame now. Al Wilson is in. First down. Line of scrimmage to the 37. This is Primus. Primus to the 30. Primus almost has the first down if he doesn't as he's at the 27-yard line area. The Tony Zachary on the start. I'm sorry, Gary. The frustration of the Washington coaches is this very play. They're worried about the sprint draw. It's a cutback play. It's designed to go outside to the left side, to the right side of the screen. They cut it back, and that's what the coaches all week long concentrated on. We've got to stop them when they cut back. They like that's a tendency of UCLA to run the sprint draw sure. one side and then cut back. They're measuring to see if they got the first down. Steve, we should mention here, Primus... That's not the guy they'd like to have starting this game. Gaston Green is out. He's had the strain knee ligament. They hope to have him back next week for Arizona State. But what depth? You've got Primus. They've got Ball, who a week ago scored four touchdowns. Well, that is a luxury to have. We see it's just a little bit short for the first and ten. Green rushed for 249 yards in his only uh, his efforts uh, thus far. 5.4 yards per carry. But I think the great thing about it is, as you said, the to have an Eric Ball and James Primus that are able to gain a valuable experience because with parity, with less numbers in our football squads today, it really is important for those younger kids to have that kind of experience. Primus had a strong game last week against San Diego State of 73 yards. They were just short of the first down as the delay in the game for the measurement. David Norrie, who's from Portland, Oregon. He started the first game, then he's replaced by Matt Stevens in game two, came back in a relief role in Tennessee, and he's now the starter. They feel he's on a hot streak. Here he sneaks for the first down. Norrie's big, and when you're six foot four and a quarter and weigh 212, that's pretty effective on the sneak. Let's look defensively now at the Washington Huskies, and through the years, they've just been outstanding. They're good this year. Here's Bo Yates. He's the next great linebacker. Fui Miona. He was a former fullback here at Washington. Albert has gone back to middle guard after starting a defensive tackle. Here's the basketball player turned football player Reggie Rogers and Ron Hadley. Not big, but very active at an outside linebacking spot. First down now for the Bruins, just short of the 25-yard line. Barr along with Primus in the backfield. Norrie on the play action fake. Throwing far side, and it's taken in for the touchdown by Mark Sherrard. His 111th catch. And so the Bruins, the first time they get the football strike, a 26-yard touchdown toss to Sherrard. And Sherrard, who already has the record for catches, will have the yardage before this year is over. Point after attempt, John Lee. If he hits this one, it will be a Pac-10 record. He's tied the record for 75 straight point after touchdowns. Clinton to hold, the kick's on the way, and you've just seen a record established. 
besides the great speed of Mike Sherrard, it's David Norris who looks away the defensive back, Vesty Jackson, number 27. Look at him. He looks to the other side. Now he goes back against the grain, turns his shoulders. He's wide open. There had to have been a bus, Vesty Jackson, that causes UCLA to jump out to a 7-0 lead. The Bruins have been playing well, and they have started today very effectively. Drive of 49 yards by the Bruins. 26-yard touchdown toss for Nori to Sherrard as Bray will kick off again. The BYU game this year, he kicked off seven times. All of them went into the end zone. They returned only one. That's how effective he's been. And he hit this one well again. Trimble will let it go out of the back of the end zone. Now let's go for an update to New York for Texas Stanford. Here's Pat Hayden. Gary Texas scores on the third play of the game. Brett Stafford is running down the line, running an option play, but the defense overcommits. Then he uses a little bit of athletic ability. He outruns some defenders. And if I'm not mistaken, Gary, he looks like a very young Steve Davis. Texas leads seven to nothing in the first quarter. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. So you can see Texas playing in Palo Alto with that lead here. We have a like score, seven nothing. UCLA with the advantage. Hugh Mellon on first down to throw. And Rick Fetty, the big fullback. He is knocked out of bounds, loses the ball, but it will still be the Huskies ball at the 22. That was Melvin Jackson with that big tackle. All right, here is the UCLA defense. That's the sophomore, Melvin Jackson. Batchkoff, excellent against the run. Toomey, we talked about his cat-like quickness. Waylon, who had that big play to start this game, outstanding player. And then on the other side is Eric Smith, and he is an outstanding pass rusher. Brings up now, second down and seven for Washington from the 23. Hill and Trimble to Whiteouts. That's Trimble in motion. Millen giving to Finney. Finney the 245 pounder across the 25 to the 27 before he's dropped there. Coming up with a stop is Tommy Taylor. And now defensively, here's Jarecki. Excellent against the run along with the freight train. Tommy Taylor. Chucky Miller, good coverage man. And Dennis Price returning to the lineup. He's been out with a shoulder separation. Craig Rutledge, the opportunistic strong safety. And James Washington, the All-American candidate for the Bruins. Third down, four for Washington. Treble changing direction. Mellon wanting to throw. Protection is there. It's complete to Treble. And Treble is knocked out of bounds at the 40. That'll be a first down. Melvin Jackson made the stop. 14-yard pickup on the play. Watch what happens this time. They get a mismatch between Trimble, 23, the flanker, the fleet foot, against Melvin Jackson, an outside linebacker. He comes across the middle, penetrating the secondary, and the ball is well thrown. Excellent pass uh, rush by UCLA, putting a lot of pressure on Millen, but he was able to get the ball off in time. A 14-yard gain to the 40-yard line, and here comes a guy who's a real load to tackle, Rick Finney, who they built their offense around. He's been slowed with the ankle. This time, he's able to pull his way forward to the 44-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Finney is just an absolute classic player. He has all the numbers. Everybody likes Finney. He's such a leader. He's a very quiet individual. No turnovers. When Rick Finney has been in the ball game in previous games, Washington has not turned the ball over. So he's such a critical player in the sense of his leadership capabilities on field. Moving around the tight end, Rod Jones. Second down and six now for Washington. Miller looking, Trimble, and excellent defensive effort by Chucky Miller. One thing you've got to know about UCLA defensively in the secondary is their corners can cover. That's the way you play defense. A lot of people felt like he was a little premature on the contact. Chucky Miller, does he, is it an intent to impede the receiver? And no, he's going right through the receiver for the football. They're not big, their corners, but... They will stick to you. And that's an important key also because in the running game, they've also got to play run support. They've got to take on a Rick Finney, who's a, a big, heavy, 242-pound fullback. Third down and six. Hill and Franklin and Trimble. Three wideouts in on this play. Trimble comes in motion. Miller needs this on a third and six. He's being pressured. This is Franklin. Miller was there again. Darrell Franklin, the sophomore from Tacoma, had a hand on it, but give credit to 37. He was close to it. And give 
a lot of credit to the way Hugh Millen hung in there. There's the play. Daryl Franklin goes. It's man for man. Chucky Miller's got it. A little bit of cushion. This time, Millen's having to step up in the pocket, and it gives Miller time to recover and to come through the ball. Millen was the player that really made it work, though. A lot of pressure by UCLA defense. The Don James team will have to punt the football. Clayland to do the honors. It's Irvine back deep again for UCLA. This one hit very high and very well. Irvine waits at the 14. And he'll be dropped just across the 15 to the 17-yard line. That was an excellent punt at 42 yards. And so, UCLA with a 7 on the lead as the ball. Don James, who has taken his team to six straight bowl appearances, trailing 7 to nothing to the 907 mark of the first quarter. Nori, from the 16-yard line, gives off straight ahead. Close to the 20-yard line. Erlinson, the inside linebacker, leading the charge defensively on Mel Farr, Jr. Mel's daddy played with Terry Donahue on the UCLA team, was an All-American. David Noy, in the estimation of offensive coordinator Homer Smith, is on a hot streak. He says he's like a basketball player. When things go well for him, he really goes well. The luxury is to have a Matt Stevens when he does go on a cold streak behind him, backing him up. Second down and seven. This time, he's going to get to Primus. Primus, nice move. Advancing the ball close to the 24. He had a couple of yards short of the first down. Bo Yates on the stop. And look at Michigan. Bo Schimbeckler's team is warned. They would win their third in a row over some outstanding teams. And Alabama unbeaten. Ray Perkins' club off to a great start. Georgia. They found a quarterback, I think, last week. I think so, too. South Carolina probably not quite as good as everybody thought they were going to be. Georgia Tech beating Clemson. Third down. Let's make it three. Almost four yards to go. Straight ahead. Primus fighting for the first down, and he's got it. That was an excellent charge off the ball by Primus. Primus out of National City, California. And let's look at the effort of Primus. Again, the sprint draw. The first time, you remember, they cut back. This time, they go straight ahead. The Washington linebackers are staying in position. They're watching that. They're not over-executing, not over-committing themselves, and they make the play on James Primus. That offensive line has been something. They are mowing people down. Primus coming out of the game now. First down, just short of the 30-yard line. This time the ball for the first time. And here comes a freshman redshirt to the 45 to 50. Into the Washington end of the field. And Eric Ball, last year, last week, tied a school record with four touchdowns against San Diego State. This is what the Washington coaches were so worried about. You've, the weak side, you've got to watch. Don't over-pursue. That's exactly what happens. Away from the ball, they, they overcommit themselves. He breaks it back against the grain. Eric Ball into the secondary. Time and time again, the coaches, the defensive coaches, Skip Hall, Coach James, all of them said that's the one play we're most concerned about that in the, that's in the UCLA system. Eric Ball out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. What depth they have at that running back spot. There's a 26-yard run. Here comes Norrie. Showing good poise, trying to get Sherrard open, and he could not maneuver for the open spot. Vesti Jackson defending on the play. Bring up second down. More and more as the passing rules have helped open up the passing game, Gary, receivers are now reading the coverage. This is what happens. David Norris on a sweep. The outside receivers are reading the secondary coverage, and they are either to go inside or outside. This time they decide to go outside. They're working against the sideline. Norris says, do something, and tries to throw the ball upfield. Excellent play by Washington's secondary and defensive rushers. Don't you like Norris' poise on that play? Second down now, 10, just short of the 45 of Washington. 7-0 UCLA. Here comes Ball. And Ball lunges to about the 40-yard line area. Joe Kelly made that stop, and we weren't sure that Joe Kelly was going to be in in this particular play. Let's look now at some scores coming up. Eric Ball with the gain as we look at Virginia Tech leading Syracuse. Final. That's a final. And look at this, an upset. Virginia. Upset by Navy. George Wells of Virginia. They were had high expectations. Of course, they're ACC. That's not a conference game. Penn State over Rutgers. Boy, what a tough schedule Rutgers has played. From the 40-yard line now. Third down and four now for UCLA. 
Wait a minute. Going to stop play. The whistles are blown. Nori throwing to Durrell, but they'll bring that one back. Again, Durrell was wide open on that play. Going to have a delay of game. They did not get it off in time. You have 25 seconds to snap the ball. They did not a five-yard penalty. The UCLA system, the receivers bring in the play. And David Norrie also has the ability to change it. It seems like the coaches that time were a little bit undecided. It took a little bit more time. And generally when a passing route is called, and I think that's what they were in, it takes a little bit more time to get it down and read coverages. And they ran up 25 seconds before they were ready to go. Willie Anderson comes into the game. Sherrard will check out. Third down and nine after that penalty. Ball and Greenwood in the backfield. They're going to reverse it. Doral to the 40. And spun down just short of the first down. Carl Doral just short of the first down. As Washington defensively and able to come up. Jim McCullough leading on that far side. But just didn't get enough of it. That, excuse me, Gary. That's what will be called a yeller tomorrow in the film session because... UCLA had three offensive linemen in position to make the play to block to give the to give Willie uh, excuse me to give uh, Durrell a chance to run the ball. Jim McCullough, number 77, missed the block because they had just what they wanted. And so on a fourth down now, we have a delay in the action with 5:15 to go in the first quarter. A season in the playoffs, the Bears pounded the Redskins into submission. The rematch is tomorrow among the regional games on CBS Sports. UCLA called timeout. They're going to go for it on fourth down, a yard to go. David Norrie may be changing the play. They like to sweep in this situation. They'll throw yardage and two tight end set. There it is. And here comes Ball, and he's not going to get it. Excellent play by Dominguez and Ron Hadley, and Washington will take over. The modern game of college football is so sophisticated. The defenses are so prepared. Tendencies are so well known, and that's exactly what happened. Two tight end set, eye formation. The tendency, the computer says they like the sweet play, and that's exactly what they were prepared for. For there's peoples. All of them right there to make the play. Ron Hadley was the big man on that play. So Washington takes over at their own 37-yard line. 7-0 UCLA. Weathersby and Finney, the running backs, behind Hugh Miller. Three wideouts on this first down. Miller gives off instead to Weathersby. He'll get to the 40-yard line. Then pick up a two, maybe three yards on the play. It'll bring up a second down. At three wideouts and ran the football. Well, that's another tendency that Washington has not shown. Uh, it's just so amazing. Both coaches, Donahue and Don James, are, are so similar in their commitments and their style. Both of them are committed to strong defenses and kicking games, and they're so well coached both sides of the ball. Second down and seven now from the 40. We're going to run to the short side of the field, and Weathersby close to the first down across the 45. James Washington coming up. The free safety made a very fine tackle to stop him short of the first down. They really loaded that play up to the right. Again, Washington is showing a myriad of offensive sets to try to confuse a little bit, to try to get UCLA to be a little bit more conservative in their defensive style, a little bit more predictable. The other thing I like about this ballgame, Donnie, you said it was going to be smash ball. It's going to be face on face, go hit somebody. Smash mouth, huh? <laughs> Just across the 45 now. A yard short of the first down, it's third. Kevin on the spread. He's going to cut it up, and he's not going to get the first down. He lost some yardage. He was felted at the 45-yard line. Excellent defensive effort. Ken Norton and also Jeff Glasser, 58, were there. Washington does not like to run Hugh Millen, but what it does when he does run is it puts pressure on that secondary, on those small cornerbacks. It makes them have to react. They just can't turn and fly to a pass zone area. They've got to watch for the run. Boy, some hitting out there on that play. <laughs> Cleveland now will have to punt on fourth down. They lost actually a yard on that play. Irvine back. He hit it very, very high again. Fair catch. 
and Irvine makes it. He's not big, but he's got the sure hands, and that's why Terry Donahue's got him in there. A punt of 37 yards, 7 to nothing, UCLA. UCLA with Primus moves the ball to 19 on a second down. Now here comes Primus again, and Primus advancing the ball out to the 25-yard line to the 26. Going to be a couple of yards short of the first down on a third down. Primus and Ball, the tandem running backs today in the absence of Gaston Green, who will be a coming superstar. He is uh, ticketed for greatness. But here's the stats on Primus thus far. Third down, two yards just to across go. the 25-yard line. He just joined us. UCLA scored the first time they had the football on a 26-yard pass from Nori to Sherrard. It's far and Primus in the eye back. Here comes Primus. Faked beautifully by Nori. What a fake. And he's going to be stormed under to 25. What a fake that time. Primus carried it off very effectively. Probably should have kept it. It looked like he had the first down on the dive. What's so amazing, though, even with the great fake, how the Washington defense was able to react so quickly to the outside uh, where the play was uh, uh, being really run. So it's fourth down. Both teams playing the kind of defense you would expect. Henderson in the punt for the first time. Ted Henderson out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Fourth year on this team, and the first time he's had the chance to be their punter. He'll be punting now from the 10-yard line. Ron Milas is back deep. Comes up at the 40. Oh, is he felt it? The ball. No, I guess it wasn't loose, or was it? He was really belted on that play. A 35-yard punt. Two-yard return, and Milas getting up a little shaky. Melvin Jackson down there. What is so important about that particular series for the Washington defense is that it's a confidence builder. They were able to cause a UCLA three, a three downs and punt the ball. They stopped their running game. That's what they wanted to do in their defensive game plan. From the 43, first down. Mellon will have Penny and Weatherspoon behind him again. Franklin now, along with David Trimble, the wideouts. Hugh Mellon with a great arm, back to throw, plays your arm, gets it out to Weatherspoon, across the 45, he's got the first down. All the way to the 45-yard line of UCLA, it was Washington to get on the stop. Mellon throwing that with somebody on him. Mellon got a tremendous amount of pressure. I cannot tell where it comes from. Let's see who, where it, the pressure right there, coming inside. Drops the ball off to Weathersby. Toomey was the man that would put on the pressure. And then Weatherby's able to make the uh, good reception and move upfield. 13 yards pick up on the play. First down now at the 44 of UCLA. Millen. Get it off to Weathersby. Weathersby across the 35. Another first down. And now the Huskies have their offense in gear. Craig Rutledge eventually made the stop. the Big Ten. Ohio State without Byer still with a lot of offense against Washington State. Iowa and that interstate rivalry. That's a su real surprise. Iowa State is not that strong of a football team in the Big 8 Conference. Michigan State who lost a tough one against Notre Dame last week. First down now just inside the 35. Miller's in trouble. And a beautiful catch is made by Rod Jones, the tight end. And Mellon spread eagled all the way back at the 50-yard line as he took a real shot. But that was a beautiful job. Melvin Jackson blitzing on the play. But Millen, the presence of mind to deliver it on target. I tell you what's happening right now. There's a real battle going on between Terry Toomey and Dan Agan, the center for Washington. Toomey is so quick. That time, Gary, he blitzed himself right out of position and was able to make the play uh, cause uh, Millen to throw the ball. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. 7-0 UCLA will return after this commercial. And a word from your local station. Sold out Husky Stadium on the campus of the University of Washington. We played the first quarter in this Pac-10 opener for both UCLA and Washington. The Bruins lead it 7-0. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. As Washington, as we get in the second quarter, has it second down and six just inside the UCLA 30-yard line. Weathersby has been so effective in the waning minutes of that first quarter. will advance to just about the 26-yard line area. Washington and Melvin Jackson pushing him back. Weathersby came in to replace David Toy, who had been the starting tailback. 
started the last two games and what they like about him Steve is he just runs so tough so hard he'll slant it up there they really believe he can develop into an outstanding player they think he's quicker than uh, James Jock Robinson who played last year he's, he's got the great hands he's inexperienced in the college game so he's still in a learning mode right now third down and a long two to go play action fake by Mellon on target and drop and then pop Rod Jones dropped it, and then on the rebound, caught it. Rod Jones is an excellent blocker, but this time shows his tremendous ability to concentrate on the ball. The ball was perfectly thrown, but he was juggled. It hit his fingertips. He concentrates. He keeps his hands, his fingers in front of him, and as he's going down, pulls the body to his shoulder pad. They think he could be the best they've had here, and you can see why on that athletic move. The late hand back to Weatherspoon. Inside the 10. And Washington has really started to put it together offensively. Tommy Taylor, the All-America candidate at inside linebacker, made that stop. In the first couple of series, Gary, UCLA's defensive rushing seven were very aggressive, coming very quickly. I think Washington now is stabilized. They realize that, and they're now picking and choosing. They're selecting their plays and making the, the plays where they're running by people. Weathersby with 31 yards on eight carries brings up a second and five now for Washington. They can get a first and goal at the three. Weathersby again. This time he's hemmed in. Good reaction by that Bruin defense who coming in here led the Pac-10 in rushing defense allowing only 68 yards a game. Ken Norton was there first defensively and Taylor helped him. Probably uh, as you watch this game you can see your TV picture getting a little bit dark when the play comes to the near side of the field. We have a very big overhang from the side. You can see the little curve there and that's affecting the picture as you see it at home. Nothing wrong with your TV set. Third down now, seven. Miller in trouble. And broken up beautifully, and that's Chucky Miller again. Has he been all over the field? Mo Hill, the intended receiver, J.D.'s son, and Miller has played superbly. It's very difficult to throw the ball from the back of your, from your heels, and this is exactly what Hugh Millen has to do. Watch number 40 right there. Terry Toomey puts the pressure, and so Hugh Millen has to lay it up and really throws a very poor pass that could have been intercepted by Chucky Miller. So a very important play did not connect, so they're going to settle for the field goal, and this is going to be a 22-yard attempt by Jeff Jager, who last week had five field goals, and now we have a play. Jager set a school record on five field goals he hit against Houston and we're going to have a five yard penalty I believe against Washington. Talk about field goal kickers. Pac-10 has a corner on the market don't they? We have Jager, John Lee, Max and Dejas at Arizona. Outstanding. Well that won't hurt him as far as distance. That'll just make it a 27 yard field goal attempt. It really, both the kickers seemingly have ice water running through their veins. They're Illegal so cool. Offense. Fourth down. So, Jigger will try it again. He's a junior out of Kent, Washington. That'll make it a 30, let's see, a 31 yard attempt, what's going to be now. Holding will be Chris Chandler, who is the backup quarterback, and who will be their future quarterback next two years. They're really high on him. Here's Jager's kick. And he blasts that one through. And Washington is on the scoreboard. 12-31 to go in this first half of play. The score before a sellout here in Seattle. UCLA 7, Washington 3. See Michigan State play Iowa or Arizona State against UCLA next Saturday on CBS Sports. Jeff Jager now has hit eight of ten field goal attempts this year. John Lee has come in here without a miss. And as Terry Donahue said at the top of this broadcast, the kickers could determine it before it's all over. In big games, it's always defense and kicking games that determine them. I know the games that I played, I felt like they were the critical, the most crucial football games. Simple, and whether you, you can't make it any fancier than that. It's always defense and kicking games. 
Back deep is Gifford Irvine. He's joined by Danny Thompson, number 15. 7-3, UCLA. Gregor's got the okay. This is a line drive, tough one to handle, and very wisely, Irvine goes to a knee. It's now time for the Toyota Leadership Award, presented weekly to a team member who has been singled out by the athletic department and faculty advisors of each school for outstanding performance in the areas of team contribution, grades, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Jim McCullough from UCLA and also Dennis Soldat from Washington. McCullough from Hema, California, is a political science major with a 3.1 grade point average, and Soldat is a 23-year-old senior from Richland, Washington. He has a 2.8 grade point average, and Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. From the 20-yard line, here comes Noy on first down, and Sherrard is down here, and it's up and incomplete. Festy Jackson on that play. Let's go now for an update on scores. Here's Jim Nance. All right, Gary. A big upset in the making. Number one, Auburn always has their troubles in Knoxville. They're losing right now to Tennessee 14 to nothing. A final, Michigan shuts out Maryland 20 to nothing. The Wolverines have not allowed a touchdown in 12 quarters. And a final also, Purdue knocked off Notre Dame 35 to 17. The Irish fall to one and two on the year. Back to you, Gary and Steve. Leon Burnett's Boilermakers, big win there. Here comes Mel Farr, Jr. on a second down and 10, advancing the ball after the 25-yard line. One thing about Farr in the estimation of Terry Donahue is he's so knowledgeable about the game. And I would imagine growing up in the family of Mel Farr back there in Detroit, you talked football a few times. I would imagine so. He's very disciplined. The coaches say he's a technician on the field. He's very secure in his athletic ability and talent. Third down and five now from the 25. Durrell and Sherrard have split out. Farr and Primus in the backfield. Play action fake by Noy. Noy near side. Durrell can't get up high enough. Double coverage on the near side. Peoples is over there along with Besky Jackson. It's fourth down. Here's another good series for the Washington defense. Gaining momentum. They want to take them out of the running game and force them to have to throw the ball to get them into predictable situations. I wonder if uh, Terry Donahue's not thinking, uh-oh, what, we're going to have quarterback problems? We're going to go to Matt Stevens? Well, Nori started out like he was going to have one of those hot streaks. Well, that, but since that time, they have not been able to put it together. Here's Henderson. He'll be booty missing from his own 10. Ron Milas, who a year ago was fourth in the country in punt returns, back to receive it. Big rush. Oh, he almost had that one blocked. Milas, no fair catch, and he's nailed. Good coverage that time by the Bruins. And we have penalty flags now at the 45-yard line away from the point of impact. So we'll have to wait on this one. That ball almost was picked up by Washington. They came storming up the middle. One of the goals of the, uh, the defensive team in the preparation of the ball game, they felt like they could block a kick. We talked about it all week. have a personal foul against UCLA. And that was not where the tackle was made. It was about five yards away where the flags were thrown. We'll be back to further resolve this situation. 11.34 to go in the first half. 7-3 UCLA. Back at Husky Stadium, your attention, your attention should be drawn to the center. Seat number 42, Tommy Taylor. This is where they picked up the personal foul. Really a, a poor play on the part of uh, Todd Jerome to be able to throw a cheap shot. The ball is already dead. The ball game is, uh, you know, it's, the timeout is there. And they have that kind of mistake. So that gives the Huskies the ball first down at the 47 of UCLA. Trimble comes in motion. Finney and Weathers do the running backs. Here comes Weathersby. And also good reaction by Batchcock. Frank Batchcock, number 92, the junior from California and probably... His main asset is the way he plays a run, and he played it very well there. It'll bring up now second down and nine for Washington. You get the feeling right now, Steve, that 
Washington really's got it together. They've swung this game around a little bit, even though they trail seven to three. They really have, and they're able to stay with their game plan. UCLA's having to struggle with theirs a little bit right now. Second and nine, short of the 45. Miller wants to throw, and he's in trouble, and he got rid of it, but Tremble, David Tremble, makes the catch. Very close to the first down. Batchcock put the pressure on Millen, and Millen has been thumped three different times. That's an eight-yard pickup on the play. The poise of, of the quarterback, Hugh Millen, is really what's moving Washington down the field. Again, watch the pressure that he gets from Batchkoff, 92, and Hugh's able to just stand in there, do what he has to do, and complete the ball to Trimble. So he's getting bounced around. There's good pressure coming from that forcing unit of UCLA, but Millen is keeping his poise. His stats, 6 of 9 for 55 yards. They are just short of the first down. It's third down, a yard to go. Two tight ends, Rod Jones and Lance Fourier, have checked in now for Washington. That's Fourier, 85 in motion. Give the weather speed. He's got it. First down to the 35. And boy, they blew him out on their right side. Yeah, that, that tells you about Washington's attitude towards UCLA. They think if they can, in those six short yardage situations, we'll go two tight ends and that we're tougher and we're bigger and stronger. We're going to move you out. And it's just mouth on mouth football. Go hit somebody. That was reported as a final a while ago. Purdue defeating Notre Dame. Wyoming leading Wisconsin. Wisconsin unbeaten in their first two outings of the year. And Missouri looking for their first win under their new coach, Woody Wittenhopper. Number 35, first down. The big pullback Finney. And very little maneuvering room that time. It was Waylon, 95. They are looking for number 30. He is a marked man as he was expected to be. Playing with a bad ankle. They think he's at about 95% efficiency. He hurt the ankle in the opening game against Oklahoma State. There they go with the signal of the plays in to Hugh Mellon. That's UCLA going to the... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the other side. That's defensively UCLA. From the 35 now. Second down, virtually 10. Little movement. And the flags come out. And Weathersby really felt at that time by Jericki and Whalen. Looked to me like Whalen didn't get back. He lunged forward, tried to get back defensively, and I think the ball was snapped before he did. And that's what happened. Now, there we go. Purdue final. 35-17. I bet Jim Everett had a big day. He played well last Outside. week against Ball State. Defense. Still second it's down. obvious that Jerry Faust did not have a big day. <laughs> Boy, that hurts, doesn't it? Losing to Michigan, beating Michigan State. Losing to Purdue. The Big Ten's been tough on him. So the penalty makes it second and five at the 30-yard line. This is Trimble in motion. Millen. And again, he's running for his life. And he just threw that one away. Pressure from Batchkoff. Batchkoff has really been causing Washington some problems on that left side. Really. You know, Gary, remember last year we saw Hugh Millen, and, and really he was in the emerging stage of being a, a quarterback. They felt like he was a talent. They had two quarterbacks, Pleur and, and Millen. They went back and forth. But really, you like Millen's style. He's more confident. The Orange Bowl victory over Oklahoma really gave him the confidence to be a big-time Pac-10 quarterback. Well, he was 8-0 in starts last year. Paul Sicaro came in and replaced him. Sicaro has gone on to med school. He had another year of eligibility. So Millen's a man. I'm not Sicaro. Are you, huh? Third down and five. <laughs> Getting a quarterback. Look out. Oh, as he felt it. Mm. Really hit by Whalen. Millen has taken some shots. He's gotten rid of the ball, but this time he did not. Waylon really pounded him. You know, as a quarterback, I don't mind getting hit, but if they're going to celebrate while you're on the ground, that's really embarrassing. Watch the pressure. The pocket just folds in around him this time. Gets a real great shot right there. Who was that? that Melvin was on, Jackson. Yes, Jackson. Sir. It was Waylon first, and Jackson finished him off a 12-yard loss, and that stops the drive. Moving the ball back to the 42, and Payne Cleveland in the punt. Irvine will be back at the 10 for UCLA. Eight and a half to go in this first half of play. Seven to three UCLA. And that's going to be kept in play. That's 
excellent effort. Darrell Franklin saved it. And UCLA is going to start from the three-yard line. Well, that's important. That's kicking game. That's an aspect of the game. Washington spends a third of their time in practice on that very aspect. Cleveland with a 39-yard punt, very strategically placed. Gary Bender, Steve Davis, 8.27 to go in the first half. 7-3 UCLA, and Cleveland has really put the Bruins in a bad situation. Again, Don James spent so much time in his practice period on the kicking aspect is so important. Norrie from the three-yard line. Far and Primus in the backfield. Primus will bring it out to the good second effort. Looked like about the six, and he kept chugging. Got an additional two or three yards out across the eight-yard line. Reggie Rogers, that's the first time we've called his name. The former linebacker, now defensive tackle for Washington. Going to bring up now second and four. One of the things that's going right now on in the stadium is they've got the Washington version of the wave. Now this is the most critical part, part of the ball game for them. UCLA really has problems communicating in the stadium. It's so loud. Second and four, straight ahead, the fullback. And he got to the 10, and that's all. So it's going to be still a good three, almost four yards to go. Somebody told me this is where the wave started. Is that correct? Well, I don't know. I, I'm sure. Everybody claims yeah, we'll, that. Yeah, we'll say it is. Okay. <laughs> we'll give them credit, and then next week, wherever we are, we'll give them credit. Well, the UCLA offensive coaches, though, are paranoid about the noise because you cannot communicate to your receivers. And in this critical situation, you don't want a mistake like that, the crowd, to affect you. Third down and three. Timeout, Norrie, and that's exactly what's confusing him right now. Very critical situation. Third and three. Part Second of the, timeout for UCLA. Part of the attitude is maybe you just call timeout and wear the crowd out. Let them wear themselves down. That's tough, though, isn't it, Steve? You're, you're trying to bark it out. you got that mouthpiece in, trying to get all the communications made. We're going to go away. We'll be back. Third and three for UCLA. UCLA called timeout. Third down and three. Just across their own 10-yard line. And they're not going to get it. Primus is dropped. Excellent defensive charge that time. And so UCLA is going to have to punt the football. Erlinson, one of the linebackers, leading that charge. So whatever they call during that timeout did not work. It looked like the play was going to open. Let's look at it again. Such a crucial play. The, you've got the crowd in the ball game. You can't take them out. It's a blast play. The fullback leading. Great pursuit. Great drive by the defense to make the play behind the line. Anderson will kick from his own end zone. Milas is back for Washington. Here's a rush. Just missed it again. That's twice they've almost gotten it. Fair catch. Milas at the last instant and very wisely elected to make the fair catch at the 49. And I'll tell you, Henderson booted that one very well. 39 yards under extreme pressure. That was Tim Peoples and Paul Wascom came charging through and almost came up with it. Now, wait a minute. We've got a delay of game against UCLA. They're going to have to do this again. I did not see the flag. I still don't see the flag. But Larry Thompson, the official, indicated delay of game. 25 seconds expired before they punted the football. Well, that really is a crucial mistake in the sense never should you have a delay of a game on a fourth down obvious punt situation. I did not see, the, see the flag. flag you see the flag no. yet? I don't think Kerry Donahue saw the flag. He's looking for the flag. Well, boy, you know Henderson's got to be a little jumpy now. Yeah, and they're going to have to give up more field position. That was an excellent punt the last time under extreme pressure. They are not holding out. Now they're loading up right to rush. Look at him. Shipped out to the right side. Here's the snap. He got one underway. Not very well hit. It does take a UCLA bounce. Miles is annihilated. Oh, was he hit on that play. Just a superb job by Allen Dial, number 27. I don't know how Miles held onto the football. Allen Dial, number 27, from Anniston, Alabama, will make the contact helmet on helmet. That was a 38-yard punt, and Washington has it at the 43. 
Well, you got to hand it to Ted Henderson. He had to punt the ball twice, a 39 and a 38 yarder. UCLA came out of it in pretty good shape considering where they were. Excellent coverage by Allen Dial, and now the Huskies trailing 7 to 3. Have it first down at the Bruins 43. 6.21 to go, first half. Hand on a counteraction to Weatherspoon. He is fighting his way to the 40. Gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven. Well, this is a, what, a typical UCLA-Washington game. Field position, good kicking games, excellent defense. Extremely physical. From the 40 now. Nevin will set it up. UCLA scored on the first series. Jaeger came back in the second quarter at the 12-31 mark to kick a 31-yard field goal. And that's where we stand right now. Play action takes. Setting up the screen. And it's read beautifully by Ken Norton and Weathersby. And you can understand why. Could not hang on to the football. Ken Norton, the son of the former heavyweight boxing champion. And they think that he is just going to be superb before his career is over. What is so impressive to me, the films are a little bit deceiving that I studied all weekend. UCLA is extremely quick on defense. They are moving around, flying bodies everywhere, and they are really assaulting Washington's offensive football team. Third down and seven. Hill, Trimble split out. That's Jones, the tight end, moving to the near side. Getting off and nothing doing for Weathersby. What a hit. That's just excellent defensive effort that time. Coming up with that stop was Carnell Lake, and he is a freshman, a true freshman, coming off the high school campus, and what a hit he put on that time. Next week, Michigan State against the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Iowa struggling a little bit with Iowa State today, but what a year Chuck Long is having. And then Steve and I will be in the Rose Bowl. Arizona State, who has a big game tonight against USC, playing these same UCLA Bruins. 2.30 Eastern Time. The punt now by Cleveland, and he got too much on that one. It'll go into the end zone for the touchback. And so from the 20-yard line, UCLA survived a very shaky moment. They were able to hang on after starting a drive from the three that fizzled, had to punt twice from the end zone. But they denied Washington, and they still have a 7-3 to three lead as we have the football at the UCLA 20-yard line. Don James, his team in the last eight years has finished first or second in the Pac-10 standings. That's just an amazing statistic. It's the 11th year. Primus Greenwood, the running backs now, behind David Norris. This is Greenwood. Out of Bakersfield, California, after the 24. He started his collegiate career at the Air Force Academy. And he has an explosive type ability to come off of football. Second down now, six yards to go. This time they had three wideouts on the play. This four backs. Taking a lot of time. Giving out to Primus. Good block. Springs him to the 30, and that'll be a first down. Tony Zachary over there, along with David Rill, combining on the stop. An eight-yard pickup, first down UCLA. As I said earlier, when UCLA has shown split backs this season, they have not run the football. It has always been a passing situation. This time, the inside sweep play with McCullough leading on the block. And it really is something out of character for UCLA. Another little wrinkle that UCLA is adding to this game. Well, that was quite a block by McCullough. Here comes Primus again, and he's out to the 40-yard line. Tim Peoples, David Rill again on the stop. McCullough is playing with a bad knee, but he pulled out on that last play and still threw the key block and got them the first down. Well, McCullough's so important, Gary, because he's a captain, even though with a bad knee, he's a self-made player. He He's a Rose Bowl veteran. He's been in the big games before. He's a fighter, and he means so much to that offensive line that really has uh, had to have been rebuilt by UCLA. There's a the man we're talking about, number 77. Second down now. Three yards to go from the 40. Straight ahead. This is Greenwood again, and he's very close to the first down. Hadley and Rill combine on the stop. Let's see if he got the first down. Greenwood... 5'11", 210 pounders, and he's shaking up. He's limping. He'll come off the field. They're going to measure to see if they got the first down. 
But they've got depth at that spot as Mel Farr Jr. now will come in and replace Greenwood. We're talking about the offensive line. The offensive line's development early in the year really has helped UCLA. I think the, the coaches are a little bit surprised that they've developed this quickly. Generally, as we said earlier, UCLA's offense is a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more demanding on its quarterback. And the last four seasons, they've always started with a different senior quarterback. So it's been a slow developing uh, offense. But this offensive line, inexperienced, but they've still played very well. I think it concerns them, though. They're really nicked up. They've got Goble hurt, McCullough hurt, Hartmeyer hurt, and they don't have a lot of depth there. In, in today's uh, situation where you've got 30 scholarships, the parity has arrived, and it's so important to just keep people healthy, so it's a matter of survival more than anything else. You can see they were just short of the first down. At half, we'll be going back to New York to join Jim Nance and Pat Hayden with scores and highlights. And then Marcus Dupree, playing last year in the United States Football League and getting hurt. Third down and the sneak by Nori, and it looks like from our vantage point he got enough of it. Again, it's tough to stop somebody that big if you get any movement at all up front. Going behind McCullough and Goble, first down for the Bruins. Well, it's so important in short yardage situations. You've just really got to surge, and defensively, you've got to guess a little bit. You've got to go for a stunt. You've got to pinch inside as they all, but just that surge of that offensive line, and then the quarterback's got to kind of make himself small and try to be invisible and find a little hole to get into. Yes, sir, they're on track for their third straight 200-yard rushing day, 109 yards, and this is just straight ahead football right now. Mel Farr Jr. carrying that time. This is what they've done all year long, though. They have just hammered people coming right at them. Well, I think it gives you so many dimensions. When you establish the running game, it helps your passing game to be more efficient. It also takes pressure off of your quarterback. And with the distribution of talent, with Primus and Ball at the running back position, you can share that load offensively. And that's what Terry Donahue's style is. Second down, a long four. A big opening this time for Eric Ball. He just checked back in, and he's dragging people with him. Ball is so strong. All the way inside the 30-yard line, first down UCLA. And Ball, just an all-around athlete, went 21 yards on that play. Eric Ball really is described by the offensive coordinator as a bull moose. Watch him just lumber through. It doesn't appear that he's got all that great speed, but he's the strongest Bruin on the football team. Just power. You've got to have a lot of help as Ford has to make a tackle. At the two-minute mark, here comes Ball again. And Ball and Farr and Greenwood and Primus are just coming right at that defense of Washington, and they're hammering them back right now. It's going to bring up second down and six. Ball has carried the ball five times for 57 yards. And remember last week, he had four touchdowns in his really coming out party. Due to the injury to Gaston Green, he's getting some playing time. Second down, six. Play action by Noy. And he threw that one very poorly. Derek Tunnell, the intended receiver, and that'll stop the clock with 124. And you wonder why you go to throwing when you're running so well. That really is a good thought because, you know, they've hammer the ball down the field and very few teams are able to assault Washington's defense the way UCLA is doing and I just think it's it's got to be a great confidence builder for David Norton the offensive unit the offensive line to keep hammering away and then they have to throw and throw the ball on second down maybe trying to mix it up on second down play with well they want to keep a balance but he's missed his last four attempts David Norton has after hitting his first two third and six the blitz Scrambling out of there. He finds Durrell. Durrell to the 10-5 touchdown. <laughs> 26 yards. The second 26-yard touchdown tossed by Nori. And he showed some mobility on that play. He really did. The you know, Nori able to put the pressure so many times when you've got a quarterback that can get outside the pocket, you stretch that defensive secondary. Now what do they do? Do they play run support? Do they come forward? It's a terrible dilemma to be in if you're a defensive back. And then Darrell able to make the catch and go into the end zone. Point after attempt now by John Lee, who set the Pac-10 record of 76 straight earlier in this game. And boy, he gets that ball up in a hurry. He hit it. And it's now a 14-3 game for UCLA. Now, if you're a defensive back and you see David Nori began to come outside, watch him. He comes outside. Now, 
what do you do? Run support? Do you come make the play? No, he throws the ball to Carl Durrell, number eight, and no support is out there. The linebacker had to be the defender. He's not there. Bessie Jackson is blocked off. Touchdown. Carl Durrell on the receiving end of a 26-yard strike. There's the time left in this first half of play. Again, we'll be going to New York to join Jim Nance and Pat Hayden. Had a couple of surprises in the East. And right now, UCLA, after that 80-yard drive and 10 plays, they were really playing what they call it, smash football there yeah. for a while, and then Sm scored on the pass. Smash ball. Smash ball. <laughs> or smash mouth. Yeah, whatever either you want one. To call it. <laughs> Donnie, you call it smash mouth, and James, uh, James called it smash ball. Smash mouth's not quite sophisticated <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> really. Here comes Bray to kick off again. And this is going to be returnable. Tremble from the 10. 25, 30, and out to the 40-yard line. And that is the first time this year that Jim Bray has not kicked off effectively as an end result of 30-yard return. Daryl Henley eventually made the stop. And so Washington, trailing 14-3, has the ball at their own 40-yard line. You had the feeling there for a moment that Washington had it all together. They had them backed up, and they let them out of there. And now UCLA has added to their advantage. Weathersby Finney, the running back, behind Hugh Miller. Miller. And he rifles one to the backside of Rod Jones. Say they are really moving that offensive line into Hugh Millen's face. He's not getting a lot of throwing room. What is frustrating for Hugh Millen is the fact there's a scoring drive, 10 plays, 80 yards. It only took 340 to get it run off and the, the, the fine pass play to Durrell. Hugh Millen's getting a lot of pressure, but that time there's no excuse for throwing the ball behind the open receiver. Rod Jones was wide open. That's the frustration of Millen right now with the pressure he's getting from the defense. Second down, 10 from the 40. Nolan back again. One minute left now in this first half. Pumps, pumps again. And on target to Jones. And he'll move the ball to the 46, almost 47. Ken Norton was there. They love to have him in on passing situations. And it's going to come to a third and three now for Washington. There's your time left in this first half. Trimble and Hill come split out. Hill to the near side. Millen over the middle. It's complete to Jones again. He's going to try to get out of bounds to stop the clock, but he cannot. He's dropped short of the 40. Tommy Taylor wouldn't let him get out of bounds, and the clock is running. 12-yard pickup on the play. And now they're going to stop it with a timeout. Those kind of plays, you don't have enough time to do, do you? Well, really not. The, what happened, the linebackers are dropping so deep. What I'm surprised about a little bit is throwing, I guess the Washington coaches realized the, open, the middle would be open because the linebackers were dropped way back. But the point is, you can't get to the receiver to one side or the other to kill the clock. You've got to use, waste the timeout. Well, they gave them what they wanted, and that's something in the middle of the field. They wasted a lot of time trying to get out of bounds. Jones now has four catches for 36 yards. Terry Donahue, the last time he came up here to Seattle, really would just as soon forget about it. They lost the game, but more importantly, he came down with food poisoning the night before, both he and his wife, Andrea, and he said he could not even get on the team bus to come to the game. And only by the outstanding work of the team physician was he able to coach that game. And he still lost. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, 21 seconds left. Middle now, 8 of 14 for 74 yards. Has a first down at the UCLA 41. He's on target, Trimble, and Trimble knocked out of bounds, and they're getting close to field goal range. Trimble to the 31-yard line. James will tell you, he thinks Trimble could kick one from 55 or 60 if they have to attempt it. Jager is the... Man that uh, is going after every kicking record that Washington's ever had, and he's following in the footsteps of a pretty good one, Chuck Nelson. From the 31, first down, 14 seconds left now in the first half. Hill, Trimble, foot out. The captain is there, end zone, Hill, broken up. Double coverage that time by Chucky Miller and also James Washington. 
And so with eight seconds, it comes to a second down. At halftime, going to go back to the quarterback of USC and the Rams, Pat Hayden, and a man who we certainly want to welcome to our CBS team, Jim Nance. They'll have scores and highlights. I saw the game where Marcus Dupree got hurt this year. He's playing for Portland. Severe knee injury. It'll be interesting to update the former Oklahoma standout. Well, Marcus Dupree had uh, a rather brief career at my alma mater, Oklahoma, and I'll uh, be taking the kind of a thing where he is. I don't know what he's doing. From the 31 now, eight seconds left. Millen wide open as Hill. Hill is going to take it in. some catch by Trimble. He was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in the sixth round, played one year of minor league ball, elected to come back, and a 23-year-old senior. What a, those are the very kind of plays that you lose a quarterback to injury. What happened when Millen went to the turf and ro was rolled over by... The two-point conversion is good. a touchdown it will hold the penalty will begin the second half against UCLA here's the touchdown play to Lonzo Hill he will be to the right side Millen is looking right towards him and all of a sudden he's wide open and there just had to have been a breakdown as he ran by the man up close well, Greg Redledge was deep and looked like he just didn't get there in yeah. time. Henley had him short. Now, here's the uh, extra point play to Trimble. Watch Trimble make a fantastic catch. Hugh Millen will throw under tremendous pressure, be rolled over his shoulder, and watch Trimble go up and play basketball. For a baseball player, football player, not bad. Not bad at all. And now we have a three-point game, 14-11. to 11. UCLA with the lead. It's been an excellent first half here at Husky Stadium. CBS Sports coverage of college football continues after this word from your local station. Back at Husky Stadium in Seattle. Halftime, UCLA 14, Washington 11. A real momentum changer at the end of the first half of play with no time remaining. Washington on a 31-yard touchdown strike. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. CBS Sports coverage of college football continues after this word from your local station. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. Well, the Huskies find themselves down by three, but they could have been a lot worse. A remarkable first half ending play. A 31-yard touchdown strike from Millen to Hill has put them right back in it. 
and UCLA's been running the ball effectively. They have, and the real key stat, Gary, is the fact that Washington's inability to run the football. They've got to have an offense that's running the ball. They cannot live or survive by the passing game, and that 28 yards is indicative of the problems Washington had in the first half. Look at that, no turnovers. That doesn't surprise you. Now they're assessing the 15-yard penalty against UCLA to start the second half. So Jager will kick off from the UCLA 45. They're going to try an outside here. Look at him jumping around. They squib it, and it's picked up by UCLA very effectively, and that could have been dangerous. Marcus Greenwood with the sure hands, and UCLA will have it at the 30-yard line. That puts some pressure on when somebody's kicking at your end of the field. Exactly. Well, the 15 yards gives you that advantage, that comfort factor that Don James needed. There it is, opening kickoff of the second half to go onside. They get the first reaction, what they want. It bounces off one of the front-line players, but it's a clean bounce, and it falls into the hands of a UCLA Bruin. That's Greenwood. By the way, Joe Kelly is starting the second half for Washington, the All-American linebacker candidate for Don James from the 30. UCLA comes out of that in good shape. David Norrie, the quarterback, gives to Primus. Primus to the 35. There was some thought in Terry Donahue's thinking that maybe they had not run against an effective team, but they're on track to another 200-yard day. Well, I think that's true. It, Terry Donahue's got to be pleased with their, their running game and also very pleased with the fact that defense has just shut down Washington's uh, rush, rushing attack. Well, we probably talked about that last play of the first half, though. Game of five, second and five. Ooh, all kinds of mix-ups there. That's Warwick. 74, the offensive right tackle firing out. He's a true sophomore, played last year as a freshman out of Butte City, California. And now we have a penalty play. David Norrie's upset. This is where you got to keep your cool, right? Exactly. You've got to put your helmet back on. Don't get the crowd in the ball game about your reaction. Remain unemotional in this situation. They go procedure, so the five yards they gain, they lose. Just gets you rattled as a quarterback. You've got to keep your composure. Everyone else around you is losing theirs. Norrie's got to keep his helmet on and keep his poise and pull them back together. You, you're going to get a bad call occasionally or a call that upsets you. Keep everyone together. You're in poor field position. Don't make Both mistakes. Sides against the offense. Second down. So it's second down 10. By the way, Joe Kelly is in on that tackle to start the second half. There's the penalties. Washington, no turnovers and only one penalty in that first half. Well, that's the kind of ball that Don James loves to play. Second and 10 from the 30. 14 to 11. UCLA leads Washington as we start the second half. Eric Ball now into the football game. Nori back stumbling. In trouble. A loss to the 23, and the Husky defense is fired up. See, when you get upset as a quarterback, oftentimes that intimidates the defense. Now they're rallying. They're doing something. They're emotional. They're in the ball game, and they just closed down. The offensive line had them frozen. They had them outside. Then it just collapsed on him. Who in the auto, along with Dominguez, back there to make the stop. Also, you wonder if he stumbled because of being upset, too. He came back, didn't set up well on that play. Just get rattled a little bit. You got it. You must keep your composure. Third down now, 17 yards to go. Now the crowd gets in the game. Yes, they are. Sherrard is in motion at the bottom of the field. Murray back. He's in trouble. That's for the owner again. Number 64, Reggie Rogers. And the crowd is alive. And UCLA now has to punt the football. You must keep the crowd out of the ball game. Keep your composure. They're doing an excellent job in the front line. Now it just collapses. David Norris holding the ball a little too long. Hugh Almono, 64, makes the tackle. They've lost 12 yards in the last two plays. Here's Henderson. A big rush on again. Didn't hit it all that well. Miles fair catch has it at the 50. So UCLA defensively. Will be starting for the 50-yard line. A 32-yard punt. Joe Kelly's fired up. For the first time in the second half, the Huskies had the ball, and they start from the midfield strike. They trail 14 at 11 as Rod Jones moves to the near side at the tight end spot. Weathersby and Finney, the running backs behind Hugh Millen. He's on the sprint out. Throws and complete beautifully. Nice catch by Finney, diving out of bounds inside the 45-yard line, a pickup of six yards. 
the UCLA defensive coaches wanted to really control Rick Finney, the fullback. This time they have to stop him on the pass. It's just an easy out route, flowing out of the backfield. Good throw and catch, Millen to Finney. Remember, this guy's 6'3", weighs 242, can run like that. Second down, let's make it almost four yards to go. Millen to Weathersby. Weathersby, first down, 35 to the 34. That nice twist on that run. Jarecki making the stop, a nine-yard pickup. And Washington is on the move now at the UCLA 34-yard line. You have to give credit to Garth Thomas, number 68, the left guard, who really made the play open up. He was the man that was leading the play, made the good block, and able to free the running back into the secondary. Receivers wide left and wide right. To the right is Hill. Trimble comes in motion. From the 34 and a first down snap. Finney and Finney to the 30. Spun down there. They're going to mark it inside the 30-yard line. And Northwestern, who earlier upset Missouri, leading Northern Illinois in the third quarter. And Indiana, Bill Mallory, that'd be 3-0 for the Hoosiers. They've really come out of there after being winless a year ago, and this is a shock. It really is. If you go into Knoxville, though, that can happen to you. Not I did not people. know how good Tennessee was, but I think that, that tells him something, huh? Second down four for Washington. Over the middle, Jones. And Jones will be dropped. But he has a first down at the 23. Taylor and Jericki made the stop. Don James told us he thought Jones was a key man in today's game, and they have found him all afternoon long. Because the UCLA linebackers are so well coached and trained, when you drop back, they drop into their coverage zone, and Rod Jones, the tight end, has been well trained this week by his coaching staff to go right in the open area, the vacated area, and that's why Hugh Millen's completing that little pass. First down, 10 and a half minutes to go, third quarter. 14 to 11, UCLA. Jones moving around to the right hand side. Melvin to Wethersburg. And he'll make it to the 21 yard line. Jackson and Jericki combining from the linebacking spot to make the tackle. Well, tomorrow in the NFL, today, Irv Cross will profile Chicago Bears quarterback Jim McMahon. And what a job he's been doing. And John Madden will check in live, plus the Greeks fix for week four and more on the NFL today. Be sure now to check your local listings for the start time in your area tomorrow, right here on CBS. From the 21, second down and seven. Hill in trouble. The blitz was coming, and that is Terry Toomey. And now we have another penalty flag at the 30-yard line. Toomey with that great quickness out of Tulsa, Washington High School, the same high school that produced Wayman Tisdale. Looked like he's almost unblocked on that play. He is so quick, so elusive. He gets around. It's very difficult for Hagen to make the block. Personal foul again. And UCLA now will lose that sack. Donahue is furious on the near side. Let's look at it. Let's look in the middle and see if we can determine what happened to me. There he just stunts around. Nobody touches to me. Number 40, he makes the tackle. There's the late hit. Obvious. Daryl Henley, the freshman. Dead ball. Personal foul against the White. Third well, down. What was it that uh, Don James said? UCLA is so disciplined, but that is not indicative of how they played this year. It really is a young freshman. Daryl Henley from Ontario, Damien High School, very gifted athlete, has been a real pleasant surprise, instinctive, but that time, and, and one of the problems with plugging, he's made a lot of mistakes, the freshman mistakes. Excuse me, Steve, that makes it third and two now, after the penalty from the 15. Weathers beat, and he's not going to get that first down. UCLA stopped him dead still at the 15-yard line. 
they had the entire forward wall along with Melvin Jackson leading the charge from that linebacking spot. The base play of the Washington offense is a sweet play with Finney and the tight end Rod Jones being the key blockers. UCLA has been well defensed in that area every time and they're just stifling the block of Finney and they're controlling the running back. Boy, it says something for your defense. You make a sack, lose it by penalty and hold them on a third and two. It really does. Jager now will attempt the field goal. Now Millen, or check that, Chris Chandler, his holder, is over yelling something to the bench. They were a man short, and here he comes. Is that embarrassing? Well, those are, that's not indicative of Don James' style of play. No. And they're going to have to call a timeout, I think. That's costly. They were a man short, and so Chris Chandler, the holder, spotted it, yelled to the far side. David Toy came running out on the field. Now Toy's leaving. I don't know if he was the man that was supposed to be in there. Don James' team was so well organized. The coaches have all different responsibilities, and just, they just, just did not communicate that time. Moves it back five yards. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Jagger earlier booted one from 31. Kick's got enough distance, and it's good. And we are tied up. 14 apiece. 22 to go in the third quarter. Husky Stadium, Seattle, 14 all. 822 to go in the third quarter. Jager has just kicked his second field goal in as many tries. Kicks off, and there'll be no return here. At the 20, UCLA will set it up. Now, David Norrie at this stage of the game is 3 of 7 for 59 yards. Interestingly enough, of his three completions, two have gone for touchdowns. Now, they're going to continue with Nori, but we're speculating when the relief man, Matt Stevens, might come in. And I think to compliment David Nori simply is that when he's had to make the big play, the touchdown passes, he's performed and got into the hand of the receivers. From the 20 down, UCLA deadlock. Straight ahead comes Mel Farr, and he comes to the 23. Fui Miona and Joe Kelly, the man who's come in to really fire him up in on the stop. The philosophy of UCLA really seems to be, let's just go hammer, let's go assault Washington, let's go put man on man. There's the blocking inside, and that's just about a draw, but that's the attitude right now of UCLA. They think they can go and power play against Washington and then finesse when they have to and throw the ball. They did that late in the second quarter. Second down now, seven yards to go. Primus running back. Second man is Primus trying to get outside. 25, nice dip and dart. He's got the first down. That was a very resourceful run. Steve Albert made the stop, but it didn't look like he had any running room. I think Iowa got it together. Yeah, I think they showed up. Oh. <laughs> Chuck Long got off the bus. And this, now you think since they went to another quarterback, they're going to be something. Oh, I really do. McCarthy and Clayton is an excellent quarterback in Nebraska. Oregon's got a fine football oh, team. They've got a great offense. Where did it go today? Nebraska, after losing to Florida State, has come alive. First down now at the 33 and a half yard line. Nori on the sprint out. Got a man knocked down. He's got some running room to the 40. And he's going to fight and get the first down as he goes out of bounds at the 45. What made that work was a seal block on the far side, and Nori scampered 12 yards. They, they have the option play in their game plan in terms of trying to stretch the defense to challenge the perimeters of, their, of the defense. Nave, Nori is not considered by any stretch of the imagination a great runner, but he's adequate. He puts pressure on defenses. There just wasn't anybody standing over there. <laughs> they that seal off block and he had an alley and he made good advantage of it. Primus, again, Primus somehow gets inside the 50 to the 49. You know, he does, looks like he stopped dead still and then gets something out of the play. Milas and Zachary make the stop at the 49-yard line, and he now has 71 yards. When numbers are so crucial to coaching staff in terms of number of players to have Gaston Green back in Los Angeles and know you've got a fresh, a sophomore apprentice and a freshman in ball, that's got to give you some security. Second and five from the 49 of Washington. Primus fumbled the ball. And coming up is Joe Kelly. Kelly, who they were questioning whether he would even play the rest of 
the season because of a severe ankle problem has come in in the second half and it's so evident what leadership he provides for this team. I can't tell. Let's see. If it's, it's amazing. He didn't have the ball secure. He tripped on the turf. A knee popped up and the ball came free. Isn't it something though? This team, we talked to the Washington coach, who said it's a quiet team defensively. Kelly is not a quiet guy. He's come in and ignited him. Oh, he really has. First down now at the 46-yard line of UCLA. David Temple in motion. That was the first turnover of the football game. Millen giving a lot of ground. In trouble, and oh, was he hit? He is annihilated. And Whalen was the guy that hit him at the 35. Steve, I don't know how he got up. He has been... <laughs> Well, we, he has been hit twice, uh, right at the last of the uh, first half, and then that particular play, he really is taking the punishment. Watch Whalen, 95. Millen gets stretched. The ball should be delivered about right here. It's time to throw the ball. Now you're in trouble, and you're backpedaling, and trying to avoid some type of contact, and Whalen is going after you. The ball is thrown. What's Whalen rolling up? Well, we didn't see it. We didn't get to see it, and I have never seen anybody hit harder than that. He got right up. Here's Weatherspoon. He's second and 10, and he gets to about the 45. He hit him right under the chin, too, and it looked like Miller went about five yards backwards, but jumped up, and he is a tough customer at that quarterback spot. Only well, 6'4", 216, and he can take a lot of punishment, but you just really hate to see when you know you've got an inexperienced quarterback backing him up. You hate to see him take so much physical abuse in the ball game. Third down now, eight yards to go. Washington is 4 of 11 on third down conversions thus far. Miller may be changing. Protection is there, and the pass is complete to Mohill. That'll be a first down at the 35 of UCLA. Darrell Henley defending on the play. What's so important about Washington, they went in motion. They changed the strength of the formation several times to confuse UCLA. This is Hill working on Henley, number two. Just a nice square out route. Ball perfectly thrown, but Washington is changing the strength of their offensive formation to confuse the, uh, the coverages of UCLA. First down now to 34. 5.48 to go in the third quarter. Penny, Penny across the 30, and the ball is to the 25, and very close to another first down. James Washington hitting. That shows the strength of Rick Finney. In the first half, they held Finney intact. He only had seven yards rushing, and that was part of the UCLA game plan. This time, it doesn't look like he should have more than two or three. But he takes on James Washington and carries him into another area, Code. He is nasty. He's tough. He's strong. He's got all the assets. And playing at about 95% capacity. Everybody in the Pac-10 just loves him. They think that he's a great player. Don't want to play against him. That's right. We should graduate. It's second down, less than a yard to go. Here's Weathersby. He's got a block to the 20, first down to the 18. Made a nice cut, but again, give credit to that Washington line. And Ron Jones, the tight end, on the pitch play, the sweep play, he's got to make the key block with Tim Burnham, number 78. Burnham makes his block. And then Rod Jones makes another one downfield that frees Weathersby into the secondary. Weathersby's 15, uh, 18 for 54 tough yards. First down now at the 18. It's all tied at 14. Jones again moving around the tight end of the near side. Trimble comes in motion. Pitch to Weathersby this time the left side and grounded at the 16. That's Jim Waller, number 66, the backup nose guard. A freshman redshirt in place now of Terry Toomey. Portland State, the home of Neil Lomax a few years ago, Lady Montana. Idaho over Nevada, Reno. That's at halftime. Northwestern still beating Northern Illinois. Dennis Green's having a good year. Second down and seven. Miller to Hill. Hill one-on-one -on -one to the five, and he is going to make it to the one. One of the things that Washington is doing, they're really putting pressure on the small UCLA cornerbacks. 
This time, Hill is all by himself. The problem is they're having to worry about the run support. They get out of position, and Hill uses great athletic ability to almost get into the end zone. Well, they think he has a chance to be as fine a player as they've ever had here. His dad, J.D. Hill, what a player he was at Arizona State later in the National Football League. First and goal at the half-yard line. Miller to Weathersby, trying to get in. He tried to back in, and UCLA wouldn't let him in. Ken Norton was there first, second and goal. At the, at the goal line, so many times, you, if you're defense, you've got to take chances. As you get closer to that goal line, you've got to take, you've got to guess, you've got to hope, you've got to stunt, anything to keep them out of the end zone. And if you're on the offense, you've got to think, hey, they haven't stopped us thus far. We've got one yard. Let's go find a play that will get in the end zone with it. Second and goal. Less than a yard, actually. Send it tight in. Jones in motion. Straight ahead. And Weathersby fumbles the football. It's loose. He's got it. He evidently able to come up with it, but it did get loose. Now, he may have been down, and that's what they're ruling. But the ball, obviously, was jarred loose. But evidently, they're going to say he was down. But it's going to be third and goal anyway. Wouldn't this be something if they'd hold him here? This will be the 11th play of the drive. And when you're in a goal line situation, you've got to know the tendency. They're right now thinking, what are we going to do if we don't make it here? Do we go field goal or try to go for it one more time? Third down. Third and goal. They lost about a half yard on that play. And David Torrey is in. For the first time in this game, Washington has the lead. David Toy, who's been replaced by Weathersby, a tailback, that must give him some self-satisfaction to culminate that drive. Jager, point after. 21-14. Let's look at it again. If you're defense, UCLA, you've got to take some chances. That's what they do. They pinch inside, trying to wall off, trying to get the play just out of the reach of Kenny Norton, and he's able to walk right in. David Toy, 34. So, the Huskies with a 21-14 lead. 2.21 to go, third quarter. Giving that extra effort makes winner. Be all you can be. Brought to you by the U.S. Army. They call UCLA linebacker Tommy Taylor the Chattanooga freight train, and they may soon call him an All-American. A senior with a B-plus average in history and economics, He's right on the track in the classroom. A Pac-10 all-academic player, Tommy Taylor's next stop will be the Graduate School of Management. To the Chattanooga freight train giving your best in class and on the field is the only way to run a railroad. This crowd of almost 60,000 enjoying the lead that Washington has taken for the first time. You see the time remaining, 221. Jagger will be kicking off from the 40-yard line. He made a point during that last break that maybe this game pivoted around a little bit when Nori got upset on that illegal procedure call. Well, they went backwards right after that happened, and uh, I really feel like that was where the composure was gained by Washington, and they got their crowd into it. Their defense was emotionally charged, and they then their offense came on the field and took it to Lincoln Field. And I think Joe Kelly's made a lot of difference. Sure has. Now, this one will be returnable. Irvine is going to bring it out. And he has felt it at the 17. The crowd is in it. Washington is fired up. And UCLA's got an uphill struggle right now. Excellent play that time by Des Moines Williams, who's a backup cornerback. There's a drive set up on the fumble recovery by Joe Kelly. It's so crucial when you're at this part of the ball game. You've got to try to keep the crowd out of it. Try to get some momentum. Gain some confidence. Do a couple of things right. Don't throw the ball down the field. Just try to complete some short passes and get a running game going. Well, they were running the world, and Primus could not hang on. Norris still a quarterback. Ty 
time to throw. Sherrard, uh, he's out of bounds. Double coverage, Zachary and Vesty Jackson. Here's David Norrie throwing back against the grain. He looks off the secondary. Tony Zachary, the freshman, number 30, uh, excuse me, it's Vesty Jackson, 27, covering the ball thrown outside and wide, out of bounds. Jackson can cover with any of them. BYU thought he is the best defensive back they've faced in a long time. Here's Norrie on the option. Not well executed. Primus on the receiving end of the pitch, and that did not look good. What happened, they go first and 10, and they throw the ball. They come back with the option. Now they're third down and long, and they're in, the, in a pretty obvious, predictable situation for the Washington defense. I think one reason that option's in is they don't feel they get outside without Gaston Green. That was their outside man. They haven't thus far today, and of course, Nori is not a very technical option quarterback. That was a very poorly run play. Third down and nine. Time to Primus, and he is going to get the first down. And again, Primus, with his dog determination, has gotten the first down. That's at least three times today. The second effort, he's gotten across the forward chain. That is a 12-yard pickup, and that is a big completion. Here is what UCLA has done offensively. On the other hand, Washington has had excellent field position. And a touchdown, field goal, touchdown. They've, been, they've produced touchdown. That's what's important. That's not bad. First down now for the Bruins. Straight ahead comes Mel Farr. And the sophomore from Detroit. Up to the 34. Corey Milano again made the stop. And they got the wave started again. What if Don James has a signal for them? They do it quite proficiently. <laughs> By 1987, they will double deck the other side of this plane facility. And at that time, they're going to have a capacity of 72,000. Can you imagine the wave going in? Second and five, Norrie complete. And the catch is made by Al Wilson. Wilson coming up the grab just across the 40-yard line. And the Bruins have another first down. Wilson coming up with an eight-yard touchdown catch last week. A reminder now, tomorrow marks the beginning of week four of the NFL season, and many of you will see the Redskins take on the Bears. And the Bears are unbeaten going into that. And some of you will see the Super Bowl champion 49ers against the Saints. Those and other regional games all starting with the NFL today. Here's a give to Ball. Eric Ball on a first down run to the 43. Bring up second down and seven yards to go. Rodgers and Hadley made the stop for Washington. It's a lot of time left for them to still keep it on the ground and establish a very fine rushing game. It's so difficult as a quarterback and as a player on the offense in this situation to really keep your composure and cool. You've got to really be patient and realize there's a lot of time. You've got a whole quarter to play. Just hang in there. Don't worry about it. That's what we have. 15 minutes left. 21-14 Washington will return after this commercial and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents College Football. Sponsored by the people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts. Steve Davis, 15 minutes to play in this Pac-10 opener for UCLA and Washington. The Huskies lead at 21-14. Second down and eight for David Norrie and UCLA, and he's dropped. I thought he's knee touched. He's going down anyway. Ten people rounded him at the 31. I thought he's knee touched. Farther up the field. Anyway, excellent defensive effort by Washington. Tim Peoples last year was a free safety. He's a strong safety. He's got more run support. He's blitzing. He gets enough of Nord to knock him down, or at least stagger him, and then bring him to the turf, bulldogging him. Well, the officials spotted that knee touching, and they moved the ball back up to 35. So it's now third and 16. Loss of seven on the play. 
Noah in this game, 5 of 10 for 78 yards and a touchdown. And he needs a completion here. Excellent protection. Over the middle and that ball is stripped. Carl Durrell had it. And Dusty Jackson able to jar it loose at the 50-yard line. was taken on the whole UCLA defense. 36-yard punt. Punt and returners live on the edge. <laughs> That's an understatement there, huh? <laughs> Milas is just not going to take a fair catch short of uh, losing his life out there. Clipping. So Washington won't have that field position that they've had the entire third quarter. One of the reasons that he's probably reluctant to put up his hand in fair catch, because of the two-yard circumference you've got to give him, you realize that even at the last minute he can wave real quickly and wave them off, so he realized he's got a little bit of advantage by the rules protecting him. Well, I admire his, uh, his courage, let's put it that way. <laughs> We're going to be back, 14.02 left to go. From the 15-yard line, their own 15. Washington will have the ball, and you get the feeling UCLA's got to make it happen defensively. They need to hold the Huskies here. They trail 21-14. Finney and Weathersby, the split backs. Trimble comes in motion. Finney, he'll, he's able to punch it out to the 17. Let's update the Texas Stanford game. Here's Pat Heaton. Four to three. Stanford has gone on a rampage. It scored three straight touchdowns. This one, John Pay, as he breaks containment. Now watch the catch here by Brad Muster. Great footwork from 10 yards out. That made the score 24 to 23, and they missed the extra point. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. Thank you, Patrick. Boy, that Muster's had an outstanding year, hasn't he? Catching the football. He is an interesting new dimension to the Stanford offense, being able to run the ball and catch as a fullback. Second down eight here for Washington. Throw by Millen, Franklin out of bounds, and that shows you Millen's strength. He, with a flip of the wrist, had that ball sailing in a hurry to the near side. Chucky Miller defending on the play. There's no doubt that Hugh Millen's got a pro-type arm. He's extremely strong and can throw that long out route. I mean, it takes me two throws the far as throw it as far. Boy, Myers must wonder if they need him. 48 points again today. They have scored a lot of points. Washington State shut out early, came back with the RPM offense. And Iowa, Chuck Longstats must be gruesome right now. They're down in Ames, Iowa, too. <laughs> the plan in Iowa State. They'll never invite them back. Straight ahead this time on a third down and two, and they didn't get it. Finney trying to get the first down. Michigan State, they've been playing some tough defense leading Western Michigan. And I cannot get over Bo's team. They've won three very difficult games. Bo is really excited about this football team. Well, they were 6-6, six and six, and no one thought they had anything coming back. Purdue handing Jerry Faust his second loss of the young season. And Wisconsin will be 3-0. What's tough about the Notre Dame loss, you've got to recruit in-state against Purdue. It's a tough loss in more ways than one. And UCLA defensively got the job done here. They should get good field position. Cleveland to punt from the 10. Ball's not going to turn over. Fair catch by Irvine. He makes it at the UCLA 40. So the Bruins have a very good position with which to start this drive, trailing by seven points. This week on the NFL Today, Irv Cross profiles Chicago's Jim McMahon, plus John Madden on the topsy-turvy NFL tomorrow on CBS Sports. After a 36-yard punt, UCLA has it just across their own 40-yard line. They trail 21-14. David Norrie on the play action, trying to sprint out of there. 
And he's going to be caught. And guess who's over there? Joe Kelly. Where's that bad ankle he's supposed to have? He just caught Nori from behind. And the All-American candidate from Los Angeles stops him at the 42. The coaches knew, regardless of what the doctor would say, that Joe Kelly really would want to play just because of the fact that he's a competitor. Number 36, watch Kelly. What great lateral speed of his ability just run down the quarterback, Nori. They call him the RH factor. He can run and hit. Runs like a safety and hits like a linebacker is what he did. Second down now, eight yards to go. Far premise to split backs now behind David Nori. Three wide outs on this play. Nori's in trouble, and that's an understatement. Reggie Rogers, who played for Marv Huntsman's basketball team, and Alan James on the blitz were there. There's James, 32. They had the blitz coming. Their man coverage, they're all tight, and it just closes, collapses so quickly on Nori that he cannot do anything. He can't find anywhere to throw it to a reasonably open receiver. That is a fourth sack by Washington for a total of 29 yards. Third down now, 19. Nori needs a big play here. Protection, throws up the field, completes a premise. Make that far, and far will not get the first down, but he got a lot of it back. Gets out across the 45-yard line. Nori that time. You wonder a little bit on that play if he got out of the pocket a little quick. He had the protection, then stepped up, picked up some yardage, but they're still five yards short of the first down. One thing we're seeing, Gary, is we're seeing a maturing of this Washington defensive football team with graduate players like Ron Holmes, Fred Small, and Timmy Amber from last year. They're really playing well. Henderson will punt the football. Rush is on. He got it away effectively. Miles, no fair catch. And he'll be buried at the 17-yard line. So Washington protecting a seven-point lead. Ten minutes, 15 seconds to go. Well, you start to speculate. Will Matt Stevens come in in the relief role of David Norrie, who's 6 of 12? Well, Terry Donnie has talked about how tough a decision it is. Here's Matt's thinking. Well, as of right now, Dave Norrie starting a quarterback, and I'm what Coach Donnie calls a relief pitcher, and... Uh, I prepared myself very well along with the coaches preparing me. And, and if I need to go in, I'll be able to go in at, at full strength. I don't look at myself as a second stringer, even though I really am. I look at myself as a uh, an inexperienced junior quarterback who's trying to gain experience and gain playing time to make himself better. And I'm also wanting our team to win most of all, and I'm wishing Dave Noy the best of luck. And Steve Davis on cue, it looks like Stevens is starting to warm up. It really does. Of course, Terry Donahue said yesterday that the drain, emotional drain of making that decision, it's very demanding when you're a coach to make that decision psychologically. From the 17-yard line, the big fullback, Finney, stopped by Ken Norton. Line of scrimmage will be the 19. So Stevens is throwing down below. We may see him as UCLA trailing by seven. There he is. He has an excellent arm. He's not very big. He's a tremendous leader. He really is. And I think, the, again, the fact is that he's been in this situation before, that both quarterbacks understand the relationship, that it's not a, a downer for one quarterback. It's just an opportunity. We've got to do something together. Weathersby backed up, tried to get outside, and then the white shirts are there. And it's going to be third down. Let's update some scores to New York, Jim Nance. All right, Gary, there's going to be a new number one this week. Tennessee just tearing up top-ranked Auburn 31-6. Bo Jackson, after back-to-back 200-yard -back games to start the season, has been held to 80 yards through three quarters. Iowa may receive some support for the new number one. Third-ranked Hawkeyes all over Iowa State, 57 to nothing in the third quarter. And how about those Hoosiers? 36-17, they start out the year now 3-0. and Back to you, Gary and Steve. And Missouri looking for their first win. Here we go. Big third down. Third down four now for the Huskies. 9.03 left in the game. 21-14. Washington Millen wanting to throw. Franklin make that hill. And Hill got it. That is some catch. Mo Hill with Chucky Miller defending on the play. What athleticism by the junior from Stockton, California. The receiver has the luxury. He knows where the ball is. Chucky Miller's just trying to keep up with Lonzo Hill. 
he can't see the ball until the last minute. All the way Hill knew where the ball was. One step is all he needs one foot in and has the catch. 17 yard pickup. Hill has made the big plays today. Here's Millen rolling out on a first down. Complete to Finney, and Finney is met and slammed down by Craig Rutledge. Finney is not thrown around like that very often. Well, I, I think you said something very key, Gary. In fact, the, the idea of. Uh, um, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it was good, whatever it, it was, was, right? No. <laughs> what were we talking about? I lost what were we talking about Hill before that? <laughs> Well, I, I was going to make a great point. I really want to. We'll put it out next week, all right? Okay. <laughs> Second down and eight down for the 42. If we can't laugh at ourselves, we're real in trouble. The split backs, Weatherby and Finney now behind Miller. Miller on second and eight, dumps it off to Weatherby. Good reaction that time defensively. Oh, I remember. Well, wait a minute. Let me see who made that tackle. That's Dennis Price. We saw him in the first series defensively, and he made a big play there. There you That was the phrase that was the big play. They've done what the UCLA defense has accomplished their goal of stopping Finney in the running game, but it's been the big play that's killed them, the passing of Millen. There's well, my point. <laughs> well, next week you could have put it up, too, because we're going to have good football next week. Michigan State and Iowa. Iowa, maybe, uh, I don't know if anybody's going to slow them down. And then the other game will be Arizona State against these UCLA Bruins. Third down and 11. Mellon tried to cross him up, and that did not work. Did not fool anybody, and Finney was buried. And the crowd didn't like that call at all. They are booing on a very conservative call on third and 11. Again, it's a predictable play. You've got Finney in the football game. He is their heavy load back that's going to get most of the pressure on those key downs. And UCLA was just able to tee off and know that he was coming. Seven and a half minutes to go. UCLA down by seven. And they're going to have a crack at the football. There's the average for Thane Cleland. Bad snap, but he dropped it well or fielded it well. And there's a penalty flag. Irvine is going to let it bounce. And at the 23-yard line, it's where UCLA possibly will get the football, but we do have a penalty flag. Let's hold it to see what that's all about. It's offside against UCLA. Well, it still wouldn't give them the first down because it was fourth and 11. So I would guess that Washington will want to punt it again. That was a 36-yard punt the last time by Cleveland. Tay Cleland did a good job handling that snap. It could have sailed past him in a hurry. A high snap. Egan is the guy that does the snapping for Washington. UCLA has two guys, Terry Theodore and Scott Franklin. Offside, defense, fourth down. So now it's fourth and six. And again, Cleland will punt the football. Egan's probably saying, I gotta get this one back there a little bit better. And he's perfect with this one. And Cleveland hit it very high. Gifford Irwin, Irvine rather, on the fair catch at the 17-yard line. 33-yard punt. Washington gets about six more yards to their advantage on that punt. UCLA has the football. Matt Stevens is the quarterback. He came in a relief role to pull out the BYU game. Started at Tennessee. As he comes in for David Norrie. And on first down, he's going to pass. And he's on target. Mike Sherrard is rammed out of bounds at the 22. And that's got to give you confidence. Coming into the ball game and complete your first pass. Matt Stevens is just as very much so an adequate quarterback. In fact, the coaches feel like that he has just as much ability as David Norrie. They don't feel any uh, reluctance whatsoever bringing in the ball game. So it's a perfect strike. That's going to be a confidence builder. Five yards pick up, second and five. Stevens, straight ahead handoff. Remus, shut back. That was Jim Matthews, the nose guard. Number 97, a backup man to Steve Albert, who was there defensively. There's his stats. Now, Stevens in the BYU game came in, pulled that game out, and he was absolutely superb. His big play, a 62-yard completion to Sherrard. 
Started well against Tennessee, went sour, came in with Nori, and Nori had been going the rest of the way. Third down, three. He tries to get rid of it and did. That was a very heads-up play, averting the long sack. We have a man shaken up. Matthews is back there, and that is Stevens who's hurt. He had a man draped on him, Jim Matthews, and that may be where the injury occurred. Matt Stevens really is an exceptional athlete. Strong arm, a technician, knows the game, a team favorite, a leader. Let's see what happens. In the grasp. That's Jim Matthews. He's spinning with his foot planted as part of the problem. Let's see if he... And then he's twisted down. There you go. Oh, boy. You can see why he has a problem. He's got you? his foot planted, and then he's being pulled down against it. Uh. There's the pain. And on artificial surface, those shoes just don't give, do they? Oh, it's just like glue. So we'll get the status of Matt Stevens. 6.25 to go. Fourth down coming up. Matt Stevens being assisted off the field. Boy, we hope that's not serious. UCLA is going to have to punt the football. Some of our crew are saying they really like this guy, Matt Stevens. Very personable. Had a chance to visit with him yesterday. A leader on the team. And obviously in real pain as Henderson gets his punt away. Hit it very high. Here comes the guy with ice water in his veins. Milas. Milas spins out of there. And he's out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Tommy Taylor on the stop. 44-yard punt by Henderson. However, an 11-yard return. Time now is starting to be very important. As you can see, they're looking at the left knee of Stevens. Tommy Taylor with a stop. There's a situation in the pro game because you would be in the player's grasp that would not have happened. Good point. And he was pulled down to the turf. And really, really, there was no reason for it. He was in control. There was no reason for that kind of injury. Weathersby and Finney, the running back. 6-12 left in the game. Washington leads by seven. Mellon wants to throw on first down. He's got his man, Jones. The tight end has a first down at the 46-yard line. Henley and Washington dividing on the stop for UCLA. 11-yard pickup on the play. That game being played in Palo Alto, and they've had some big plays in that one. The Longhorns winning last week over Missouri. Fourth quarter. Portland State, that stayed the same now in the third quarter. Kansas State, trailing North Texas. North Texas played the heck out of Oklahoma State, didn't they? He certainly did. Here's Weathersby, and he's to the 45-yard line. So it'll be second down and about nine yards to go. Frank Batchcock made the stop. Now, that's encouraging, isn't it, to see him up and running? They won't let you get on that if there's any chance serious injury. Do you think you know more about that than well, I do? He's the man that's got to tell them. I mean, they can feel around on the knee, but it's basically the player's got to say, I I'm hurt. I know I'm hurt. I think Norris going back in the way he looks. they got to get the football first. Second down and nine. Miller to Penny, and he has cut down. That was an excellent defensive effort by Terry Toomey. Toomey's not big, but they think... He's along the lines of Carl Morgan, who is such a fine nose tackle, now playing with Tampa Bay, and he really made a fine stop on Finney. You don't hit him like that and drop him very often. Uh, UCLA is playing very well against Finney, and Washington's offense, I know the offensive coaches are pleased because they really have been able, even with a fullback-oriented offense, pressure has been placed on other people. It's been on Hill. It's been on Hugh Miller. Third and nine. Weathersby breaks out of there, but he's not going to get the first down. He's dropped short of the 40. Excellent reaction by Marcus Turner, another one of those red-shirt freshmen in the secondary. And so, Washington now will have to get rid of the football. Time running now at 4.30 left. I think it's going to be Norrie. I see Stevens running back and forth, but just the fact that Norrie was licking the hands and rubbing them together was an indication to me that he thought he was coming back. Yep. No hurry now by Washington. They're going to let that clock run down. 4.06 now. And so with 3.59, we're going to have a delay of game. They wanted the penalty. 
So that'll move it back out to the 45. Well, historically, if you look at this team, Steve, UCLA's been a great late stages of the game come from behind team. Look at BYU, Tennessee, so they've been in this position before. Well, you were excited about UCLA because they, they've been gaining momentum. What this does not only eats up some time, but gives really clean a little more room to work with on this punt. A little bit more ability to place the ball in a, in a situation where they'll have a short return or at least get better coverage. Boy, that's a man that's very disappointed. And rightfully so. You see, they have it wrapped. That's the part of football that's hard to digest. Here is Cleveland, Irvine, fair catch, and he makes it to the 12-yard line. Well, it's a long ways to go. With three minutes, 42 seconds left for UCLA. The Bruins, who are unbeaten coming in here, 2 all and one find themselves down by seven. 21-14, 3.42 left in the game. UCLA trailing by seven points, has the ball now at the 13-yard line. Dave Norrie has come back in at quarterback. Talking earlier before the break, you... We were excited about UCLA because they've really played well in September. They've had to go into foreign territory, into Tennessee, at BYU. They won and tied one. They played convincingly last week in San Diego State. Washington, their first victory last week. They really improved in one week's time. Well, I'll tell you, Donnie, you said this is just a typical Washington team. Don't feel sorry for them. Murray back to throw, up the field, and it's complete. Nice catch by Sherrard, and that is one of the better throws Nori has made since early in the game. That moves it out to the 31, a gain of 17 yards. Texas now leading Stanford 31-23. And that is a very, very difficult play to call in that field position because you know you're going to be throwing into a crowd. We'll be going to the Texas-Stanford game at the conclusion of this one. 324 left in the game. First down, Norrie throwing on target. Catch is made by Sherrard again. He makes a brilliant move, and he's going to get another first down. That's the reason he's an All-American. He made an ordinary play into a first down. Jim Matthews got him an 11-yard pickup. The amazing story. He's a walk-on player. Mike Sherrard, watch him. Able to make the catch. He comes back, drops the uh, coverage back. Now watch him get away from Joe Kelly. Now he moves up field. Go get the first and ten. Get out of bounds. That's exactly what happens. 315. First down now at the 42. No, is two for two since coming in on this drive. And now three for three as he goes back to his favorite man again, Mike Sherrard. It's a Norris-Sherrard combination now. Another first down. This one to the 42 of Washington. If you're a defensive secondary back, you've got to be very fearful of Sherrard's tremendous speed. 4-4 speed in the 40-yard dash. You've got to give him a lot of cushion because all of a sudden he stops and goes, and you're not going to catch him. You think Norris on one of those hot streaks? He's got to be. Wilson is now in, along with Willie Anderson. A little relief roll, and that play is just absolutely stopped dead still by Reggie Rogers. Rogers hit Eric Ball the moment he got the football, and there'll be a loss back to the 48-yard line. Rogers is only 6'7", 245 pounds. We've not heard a lot about Rogers in the ball game. This time, he stunts inside. 72, Cox is not even going to touch him, and he makes the tackle. So he juked the uh, defense, uh, the offensive tackle, Cox, and makes the play. Lots of six, second and 16. No, he's in trouble. Gets it out. It's caught by the ball. The ball is hit instantaneously by DeMond Williams, a backup quarterback. now, UCLA is in reverse, and they're going to call a timeout. The line of scrimmage now the 42, and they need to get to the 32 of Washington to get a first down, which means third and 22 coming up. That time, Washington had seven defensive backs in the football game, and really, 
I tell you what, David Norrie's got to be very fortunate that he didn't get a ball intercepted. When you start backpedaling in that situation, you've got to be very, very cautious that you're not throwing it into a crowd because that's the one thing. Throw it away, start back up field at line of scrimmage, but don't get in those uh, pressure situations. There is Skip Hall, the assistant head coach with Don James. Next Saturday, there's college football right here on CBS. Many of you will see the Michigan State and Iowa Hawkeyes. And some of you will see the Pac-10 battle from the Rose Bowl, UCLA against John Cooper's Arizona State Sun Devils. Here we go, third and 22. UCLA now has two timeouts remaining. Darrell, Sherrard, and Anderson, three wideouts, have come into the game. Noy is caught. And Farr tries to stay on his feet. Looked to me like he had two men in the same area on that pass route. Farr got to the 50, but that is way, way short of the first down. They actually had three men flooding that particular area. As we look at the Texas Sanford score, it's tied up 31-31. And really, Norrie threw it into, I think he threw the ball a little premature, had a little bit of pressure, and threw the ball before the routes were fully developed. Stanford made the two-point conversion to pull even in that football game. John Pay, you never get comfortable when he's throwing the football. Just another one of the outstanding quarterbacks that Stanford's had. Later this year, we'll have the UCLA at Stanford game. Well, the Bruins have used another timeout. They have one remaining, and with fourth and 19, you've really got to have a remarkable play here. And Homer Smith up on the press box conferring with Terry Donahue, and that information will be relayed to this man. Well, on on Homer Smith's play chart, he has all the down and distance situations. He's now going to the column called panic. <laughs> and he's looking for the play that is in a panic situation. Desperation play because this is exactly what situation we're in. Fourth and long. You know that you've got seven defensive backs. They're going to be backpedaling. They're going to give up the short zones and just make sure you don't get the first and ten. And actually, they would give up the first and ten, but they're not going to give up that long throw down the field. You think about that at the end of the first half, how UCLA allowed that touchdown. Well, that was the best. There, there had to be a, a breakdown in the secondary covers. Anderson, Sherrard, Durrell, three wideouts. Here we go. Fourth and 19, two minutes left. From the shotgun. Sherrard, it's intercepted. Joe Kelly. UCLA can stop the clock only one time as you see the time remaining. And now they're going to use that timeout. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. As you look at a scene you certainly don't want to see. Mo Hill for the Washington Huskies. He made that touchdown grab of 31 yards. Remember the big third down grab he made to keep it going? And for UCLA is defensive tackle Mark Whalen, who was on Hugh Millen's body every time he threw the football. Great pressure put on by Whalen. They are the Chevrolet players of the game, and a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. I'll tell you what, as this game wore on, one guy you had to consider was Joe Kelly as our MVP, the way he came on in the second half. Well, they really uh, played well on both sides of the ball. I just, I really believe that the inability of, of uh, UCLA 
just to get the big play when they needed it. They really didn't have that many big plays in the ball game, whereas Washington certainly was able to capitalize on the big plays because the run was shut down by UCLA. But the big play was the key. Well, it's tough. You know, when Terry Dowdy, you won here in 76, that was the first time UCLA had won here since 1958. They had won two of the last three. And I can hardly look at that picture as Matt Stevens goes out. Here's a give to Weatherspoon. And he spun around and dropped it to 38. So Washington will be in no hurry. So again, the Huskies, and this is not anything new as far as their program is concerned, have really come back 0-2 early, losing to Oklahoma State and BYU, winning at Houston in the Astrodome last week, winning here today. And again, it's happened before. In 75, Don James' first year, they lost their first two, almost got to the Rose Bowl. 77, they lost three of their first four and won the Rose Bowl. So that shows the resourcefulness of this Don James program. What's scary is the fact that they're really gaining momentum off of last week. The improvement they've made in the last two weeks is really phenomenal. They really did not play well in the Oklahoma State game. They got Finney hurt, didn't play all that well, and then they really played poorly against BYU. Marty Aronoff, our statistician, points out here in the second half, Hugh Millen completed nine of ten passes. That uh, was a remarkable effort. He threw a couple of passes early in the game and a little shaky, but he got it together. Aronoff doing an excellent job in our statistician department. Trey Bender, our spotter. Our producer, Bob Dikas, our director, Larry Cavalina. Associate producer, Donna Miller, and we're looking forward to working with this gang the rest of the year. Look at this. It's all even. And again, we remind you, we'll be going to Palo Alto and Brett Musburger and Eric Parsegian for the conclusion of that game. Washington taking a delay of game that can care less right now with 21 seconds left. Fourth down, 11. Cleveland will punt from the 20-yard line. Irvine is back deep. You know they're going to try to block it. That's their last gasp effort that they could. And he got it off effectively. Kicks it away from Irvine, and the clock winding down as that ball bounces around. And uh, they're going to stop it with 14 seconds. Somebody touched it for Washington. Well, do you have a 14-second play? It, it would be about like their uh, play the last time. Last series. You just got to throw it down the field. Hope for a completion or a pass interference or something. So the line of scrimmage will be the 37. Tell you what, these two teams have their work cut out for them next week. UCLA will play Arizona State at home, and Washington has to go to Oregon. And people are saying that Oregon's the best they've been in a long, long time. Gerard Anderson Durrell, the white out from the shotgun is Nori. Delivers on target, getting out of bounds quickly as Sherrard. And he's picked up a lot of completions in the second half. The line of scrimmage, the 45, that's still going to be short of the first down. He has 6 of 84 in the game. Tonight, a very big game in Tempe, Arizona. USC, Arizona State. Arizona, who has a six-game winning streak, is playing Colorado in Pac-10 play tonight. Arizona doesn't play USC or Washington this year. Nori on target, but there's not going to be enough time. Sherrard goes down again, and this game is over. So Don James has won it. His team 2-2, two and two, Terry Donahue's team, suffers their first setback of the year. They go to 2-1-1. One and one. The final, 21-14 from Husky Stadium. For Steve Davis, I'm Gary Bender saying so long. Let's go down to New York and Jim Nance. Much, Gary. A big win for Washington. Don James coming back after.